successful evening to everyone and months of 8 standard. A wonderful evening to all and to keep it up 8 standard. We, we are from PSWRS Jesse Girls Paratagiri School. So today we are going to explain you about a mathematical concept, right? So do you know what is mean by mathematics? Yes. Mathematics is nothing but science and study of quality, structure, space and also the change. So first we would like to explain you what are the use of mathematics in our daily lives. Mathematics is a universal language. It is applicable for the all aspect of life. Mathematics show you a way to understand the pattern and predict our future. Let us see one example for the mathematical applications in our daily life. For example, here we have taken a railway track. This railway track is made up of some parallel lines. So this parallel line is subject to the mathematics. This uh, we here, here we use the mathematics in our in the construction of a railway track. And when we want to construct a house, we can also observe many types of shapes when the engineers are constructing our house, right? So the shapes like rectangle shape and also the square shape and the two similar triangles, we may observe. So these are also subjected to the mathematics, right? So now we would like to give a most important example for that, that is architecture. Mathematics is a core component of every engineer and it is widely used by the architects also. Architects use this mathematics for the finding a square area of a loop and the dimensions of a playground and other places like plumbing, parking and others etc. So behalf of that we, we are going to explain you about the topic that is basic proportionality theorem. So this basic proportionality theorem was proposed by Thales. He was a great and famous Greek mathematician and he was a philosopher around the 625 BC. Now we would like to explain you about what are the examples and this basic proportionality theorem has a short form that is BPT. The basic proportionality theorem states that if a parallel line is drawn one side of the triangles, it divides the two sides of the triangles in the same ratio. For that we have taken a model which is skeleton triangle. A, B, C. The theorem, uh, it is a skeleton triangle with A, B, C. Uh, for that, uh, the theorem states if a parallel line is drawn. So for that, with using our model, we should draw a parallel line. I have drawn a parallel line that is D, E, which is parallel to B, C. And uh, the theorem states if we draw one side of the triangles, it divides the two sides of the triangles in the same ratio. So if we take a one side, that means the BC is the one side and we have to draw a parallel line to the BC, that is DE. That means DE is parallel to BC, right? So for that, the difference between these by these is equal to the difference between these and this is the form that, that means the, part, uh, the length of this part by this part is equal to this part by this part, right? So now we would like to give example here. Here we can count the numbers which are the larger lines. Then it must be equal. For that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The measurement is equal. equal. So that can be proved as a basic proportionality theorem. And, and now we would like to uh, ask a question that e, uh, can we take only skeleton triangle and why not the isosceles and equilateral triangle? Yes. If we take the equilateral triangle, it has three sides with equal length and equal sides, right? Uh, if we draw a parallel line to that or not, we can easily find out they will be in the equal ratio. And also in the isosceles triangle, it has two sides equal with length. If we take the two sides like this, there will be the equal and the other side will be different, right? So here we can also say that that will be also easy to prove. But the skeleton triangle means that it has the three sides with three different lengths, right? So here we are taking skeleton triangle because uh, if you prove this skeleton triangle, that means it has three lengths with three different sides, right? So it is easy to prove uh, by proving the skeleton triangle. And it is very easy to prove the isosceles and equilateral triangle after proving the skeleton triangle. And we can here use all types of triangles mentioned here. And one more question to you. How many parallel lines can be drawn in a triangle? Yes. Based on the triangle we can draw many infinite parallel lines on a triangle. 
and it is used for the basic proportionality theorem also. It says if a parallel is drawn, it divides the uh, two sides in the equal ratio. For that, we have taken here as a parallel. If we count these measurements, it can it can be divided into same ratio. That is one, two, and here also we can see that one and two. And we can we count these. These all are equal in centimeters ratios. And uh, we can observe here also an example for that. So, if we take the two trees and one person who was seeing the topest tree and the smallest tree. So, the, the length between a boy and a small tree will be equals to the length between small and the big tree. Here we can observe this length and this length. That means this length is equals to this length. Here we can also observe the basic proportionality theorem. So this basic proportionality theorem will be used for construction and also the painting, tiles as well as the precisions. Now we would like to give you a best example for that. So here you can observe a triangle proportionality theorem in the professional world, right? So for example, an engineer wants to build a mountain road. Uh, that means when he don't know the correct length of the mountain road, he will... He will may estimate the different uh, lengths, right? So, here we can take that 800 feet, 900 feet and also the 1200 feet. So, if we draw a parallel line, if we draw a parallel line to that, that it will be divides the equal in the same length. That means, here this part will be equal in both sides. Here we can also say that basic proportionality theorem is also used and by this, by that the uh, engineers also construct the mountain roads in very high level also. And here we can see one more example. We can see some designs in our float. For that, if we can also find the equal ratio. If we take this as a length and, and we can draw a parallel line here. Uh, to find this, the ratio between and this length by this, this and this is equal to and this by this is equal to. So we can get this answer. So why we have taken this length because so when we have drawn a parallel line to this uh, larger triangle here the another small triangle will be formed right. So to prove this parallel line's length we have to divide that means this length by this. That means this part of the length divided by this length. So therefore we can easily get the answer. Thank you. And now we would like to give a conclusion for that. So this basic proportionality theorem is very useful in our daily life. And this is useful for constructions, painting, styles and also the precisions. So and we can this use by for the finding equiangular triangles also. So uh, we, we had used the, these in many days in our life. And by this we can say this basic proportionality theorem is very useful in our daily life. Thank you for giving this opportunity. A cool evening to everyone. This is Niharika. I am sharing 8th standard. A colorful evening to everyone. This is Harika from 8th standard from T.H. Jadaras J.C. Paragini. So today's our theme is safety and security. In that our sub theme is standards. So do you know what is mean by right? Right which is morally good and acceptable and justice. So do you know where this idea was comes from? So the child rights idea, idea was come from at France because on that time the many of the children were working in factories and industries so that was the start the loss of child rights. So after that the UNO was founded in 1945 and but they was adopted these rights in 1989. So already we know that uh, in the constitution many of the uh, rights were there. Based on that, they classify into four types of rights. Right to survival, right to participation, right to protection and right to development. Right to survival means first we need to right to be born and right to be freedom, right to be educated and right to be have a parental protection. Right to participation, right to free expression, right to association. We also give chance for to uh, participate in all activities for a child. Right to protection, right to protect from neglect, right to protect from physical and sexual abuse, right to protect from dangerous drugs, right to development. Right. According to the right to development, today's children are tomorrow's citizens. 
uh, right to learn, right to ed ed education, right to <coughs> freedom, right to education. Right to Education was Act was introduced in 2009. A child must need education to build a new nation in her future. And when these rights are violated, they approach the court. And according to these laws, the court must be give a punishment or a justice for a issue. And Prohibition of Child Marriage Act. And this act was introduced in 2006. Uh, Already we know compared to those days, these days are the better uh, because on those days the, the small child was married to a uh, adult. So compared to the, uh, those days, these are uh, most uh, valuable days because that was introduced uh, to avoid these uh, kind of situation, this, this act was introduced and juvenile justice, this, these juvenile justice were uh, and these juvenile justice were uh, separate to the children and to justice and to justice the children and this is the prohibition of uh, sexual offenses and this is introduced in 2012 so a child must be aware from the sexual and physical offenses and this is the uh, child to protection uh, uh, right child labor uh, child Labor Act and this act was introduced in 18, 1986. A child must be stay away from the labor work. Uh, for a, uh, for, shall I ask you a question? So, if we see a boy or girl on a road and he is a he or she in uh, is a child, so we must uh, know the situation of that. It means we have to know the situation and uh, call to the help. Uh, child helpline 1098 it is for only children so these are the some of the programs according to women and child development so free and compulsory education and it is introduced in 2009 sarva sikshya abhyan it is a government aim to give every child an elementary education integrated child development scheme a child must develop a child must develop through education and integration child protection scheme a child must have a parental protection not only parental protection they must need the response they must need the response they must need the responsibility of everyone government or and everyone midday meals program midday meals program was introduced in 2001 at tamil nadu because the child must develop for example we see in villages in Angan, at Anganwadi's the small child was got and learned something and they get nutritious food and the pregnant ladies was also get uh, like balamrutam eggs they get to develop uh, a child they introduced the, these midday meals program and Muska National Health Mission and um, it is one of the government program so these are the some of the Indian glassing policies a uh, guardian and uh, wards act. A child must have a god uh, guardian. Go, what what is mean by guardian? It means those the child who, uh, who protect the child we call it as guardian. Is it his father or a teacher? Any and it is introduced in 1890. Factories act amended and it is introduced in. 1948. Already we know at France, the many of the children was worked in factories. On that time, they introduced this act. 1956. Hindu adoption and main maintenance act. So, uh, as for the Indian, uh, as for the Indian rules, there is many of the many of religions, uh, Hindus, Muslims, uh, Sikh, Isai. So we do not force uh, in everything. Uh, they need. Uh, they worship their uh, as they wish uh, as it is Hindu or Christian we do not force so to abolish that the government has uh, strictly given this act in 1956 and national policy for children and it is a government program so child labor prohibition and regulation act it is introduced in 1986 the prenatal diagnostic techniques regulation and prevention of misuse amended act this act was introduced in 2000. So as we know that due to the technology, uh, many of the uh, pregnant ladies 
know that before giving a child birth to a child is it is female or male is it is female they do not give a birth to baby so to abolish that it means they are seeing gender discrimination to abolish that the government has strictly given that to uh, the prenatal and this act prohibition of child marriage act this is the act to abolish the child marriages and these are the some of the laws so these are the rights behalf of that four uh, four main rights these are the some of the rights equality uh, the child must need equality we do not see is it is male or female everyone is the equal care and protection a child must need care and protection identity a child must have identity in society she must have her own dignity and respect in the society right to information a child must have right to information everything or anywhere justice a child must be must be need a justice and freedom of expression a child must need a freedom of expression according to her talent these are the some of the um, rights by this theme i think uh, hope you all understand about this so by this theme we can break an awareness in children about these child rights and we know in villages many of the illiterate people that doesn't know what about child rights what that the child must be have human and child so uh, to uh, to understand about we can um, we can telecast in tvs and we can print in papers also to understand that uh, by taking this awareness on children we can explain about uh, with the children to illiterate people also so thank you for giving this me opportunity and by this the children the child rights must be applied in child life so it is a best better for the for their future thank you